I think it was pretty bang on. Welcome back to that tattoo show. <clears throat> Let me start that again. I'm still um, I'm, I'm <laughs> waiting for the CBD to kick in. Welcome back to that tattoo show. I'm a cool guy. And I'm a bad man. I don't think you're a bad man, though. I'm not a bad man, but somebody thinks I'm a bad man. I actually don't think I'm a cool guy. <laughs> but opinions are like arseholes. Everybody's got one. And if you'd like to know more, you're going to have to dig around in the comments and, uh, and find that particular conversation. And just so that you know, of the comments that come from the tattoo show in that conversation, two of them were written by me, two of them were written by Chris. If you can guess who wrote what, then there might be a little prize in it for you. Ooh. Have a dig in the comments. <laughs> we'll see if we can organise a little goodie yeah. bag for you or something. Oh, talking of goodie bags, because uh, you haven't seen the episode about the goodie bags yet, uh, because we, we do all this stuff out of sync. It's about a week and a half out of, out of sync. Uh, you haven't seen the episode, so you haven't commented yet, so I haven't been able to decide who gets the goodie bags. That will be next week's episode. Because otherwise they're going to be going, where's my goodie bag? And I'm like, I ain't seen the comments yet because the episode's not out for a few days. That's when the comments was like, apparently you're going to give away a tattoo machine. And it's like, well, apparently you we don't. We did. You don't follow us on social media. If you did, you'd know we would give, we'd actually given away a Cheyenne Soul Over Unlimited. Hand delivered, may I add. Because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a bad guy and I'm a cool guy. I know. Well, you're a bad man and I'm a cool guy. How's that work? Well, yeah, anyway, we're not really sure what's coming up on the show this week. We're probably not going to follow the rough format that we have for the show. But we are. It's just winging it. Yeah, we're winging, winging it. it. We're just winging it this week. I'll see you after the intro. Well, we'll see you after the intro. Welcome back to the channel guys. If you are new to the channel, remember hit like, hit subscribe and do all that stuff to keep up to date with all of the goodness that we bring you. I think that's nice, isn't it? That's a nice, a, a nice man would say that. <laughs> <laughs> Only a nice man would say that, not a bad man. <laughs> so what have you been up to then? Uh, I hear you have a new camera. Well, uh, yeah, so hopefully the um, image quality on my end of it, because Chris's has been really good for a while. I've just had to do the slightly painful procedure of buying a new camera. When you get as deep into this as we are... Then balls deep, bloke. Balls deep, yeah. <laughs> Cameras get expensive at this end of the world now. So it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, about two and a half grand worse off now. While I think about it, though, I actually got this through a friend of the channel who's, who's actually in the background, the, um, Bill and the Camera Centre UK in Cardiff. I've actually lent Chris bits and pieces of gear to test out, and they've, they've been really helpful. And not only that, we're just, you know, telling us which cameras. Like, Chris knows more about this stuff, but I need a bit more help. So Bill Bill really helped me out with a good camera, a um, couple of good lenses to do the things that I need to do because we've got some other plans for some other filming. So this is one of the lenses. I've got another one. I'm boring you with that stuff. But thanks, Bill. That I didn't know what I was doing, and now I know a little bit more about what I'm doing. Bill is one of my clients. I've been tattling him for a while now, right? And I, this isn't, like, you know, sponsored or anything at all, right? Like, genuinely, no. right? If you want to buy a camera, phone Camera Centre UK and say, I want to speak to Bill. Bill is like, oh, I don't know what to say. Like, he's like, a, he's like a guru. He knows everything. Like, he knows everything there is to know about cameras. Like, you tell him what you want to use it for and, he, and what your budget is, and he will tell you exactly what you, you That's want. That's basically, yeah, it's basically what I did. I went, Bill, I need this. You know what I'm using it for. These are the two sort of focal lengths on my lenses I find myself using. He's like, right, what you need is this, 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 this. I take your choice out of them. I went, I drove from Birmingham to Cardiff, went into the shop, he walked me through the camera, showed me the lenses, let me try them out. It's great, man. If you don't know your next upgrade or if it's your first camera or you're just getting into this idea of filming, I know a lot of tattooists are doing that. You could do worse than speak to somebody like Bill at the yeah. camera centre because the, the bloke knows his shit. He knows his <laughs> shit. He, know, he does know his and shit. And Cardiff is, where they are in Cardiff is a wicked little place to walk around. Yeah, the, in the arcade. Nice bite to eat. Yeah, Even yeah, in all the arcades yeah. and that, it's really nice. Yeah, we had a good time. It was a little bit expensive because Karen went shopping as well, so that hurt and all. I bet she didn't spend yeah. as much as you though. Did she fuck? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ironically enough, right, this brings, you know, the comment that we said before the intro and this kind of camera discussion, I, I feel like, you know, we're being in it, but it, it's making me think about a topic that I've been chatting to Paul about on one of our videos, like, uh, obviously they disagreed with something that I said, and, you know, you're perfectly fine, that, that is no problem. 
you're okay to disagree and I'm okay to disagree with you. Obviously, we test machines thoroughly. We don't just hold them in our hands for five minutes. We do a lot of testing. But basically, the person turned around and said, um, what they said, they said something like, why would Cheyenne even give you this machine to present to the world when blah, 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 blah. And then Paul replied, you know, perhaps it's because we've spent, you know, all together about, you know, 15 grand on yeah. shit to make this show with. You know. Basically, yeah. We've spent a lot of money. Obviously, you know, you know it's, it's stuff that we've accrued over time, but it, it's, it's cost us quite a bit of money to be able to do this show. We funded it ourselves for 12 months. We've had help from machine companies like Cheyenne, Thank like you. FKINs. Thank you. We had help from companies like Barber DTS, Killer Inc. have helped us out. Thank you. Rob from Electrum, Thank Raw you, Rob. Pigment, Thank you. Electric Inc. have sent us stuff. Thank you. Like, we wouldn't be able to do this channel without those people and and other people like that helping us out. And we fucking appreciate it. Like, we do. But as a channel, we want to grow and we want to be able to bring you more content. And I don't know if you've any of you've seen it, but Paul's uploaded a series that he made on his other channel called The Modern Electric. Is that what it's called? Modern Electric the series. Like, I think that's what I think that's what we called it. Yeah. So it was on my my old channel. Like we've talked about this before. I had a channel, Chris had a channel, and we've kind of just left left them as we've concentrated more and more on the, this particular channel. And we'll do things on our other channels at some point. Mine will probably end up full of like music and painting and, and whatever, but we're really focused on this channel. So I figure you guys enjoy watching our content. You might enjoy that. So we're serialising it for the next few weeks every Monday. And I hope you enjoy it because the second season will will feature not only me and the guys at my shop in the Midlands, but also it'll feature Chris and the guys at his shop in, in Bridgend, in Wales. Yeah. So, and it's kind of going to be the story of, I think, both the studios kind of recovering from COVID, the changes that have happened, because Chris's studio has gone through some massive changes during the lockdowns. My studio has gone through, gone through some changes in the lockdown. We've both gained staff, lost staff. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of, lot of things have, have changed, you know. So... And I think it'll be really good, you know, and we're trying to bring you that content. But again, all of this stuff... Costs money. It costs fucking money. It's as simple as that, man. It's costs dope. Yeah, and it's like, I try to explain to people, like, when we're doing this stuff, it's like, I'm working at the minute five to six days a week tattooing. I'm filming while I'm tattooing. I'm managing to film for like an hour or two after work as well, like once or twice a week. And then I have to edit till stupid o'clock in the morning. So for us to be able to bring you more content, which we really want to do, because we love doing it, it, that means that we have to kind of take a kick in the dick and take some time off work. Yeah. Obviously, we've all got bills to pay. So financially, we're kind of at a predicament where we're, we're kind of like, well, what do we do? We don't want to monetize the channel. Not a fucking channel. Like chance. everybody's dream. Not yeah, everyone's world. dream is like, get a YouTube channel, hit the thousand subscribers, get it monetized. And the problem we've got is we don't like having adverts. Like I don't like watching YouTube videos with adverts. And I know people- Do you know, the, the thing is, you guys will have seen all this, right? And you'll have seen it, we've talked about it. You watch an eight minute video and there's five minutes of adverts in the eight minutes. It's like every 30 seconds, it's like it kicks back in again. And it infuriates me yeah. when I'm trying to, like literally just today I was trying to watch some camera stuff and it was, there was just adverts. I'm trying to work yeah. out how the bloody menus on this thing work. And there's just advert after advert and it breaks your concentration. You're trying to figure something out. It breaks the conversation that we're having. The other thing is from a, perfectly honestly, as content creators. That's mad, isn't it? We're content creators. Look. One of the things that YouTube don't allow us to do is, is they don't allow us to pick who the who the advertisers yeah, are? Yeah. We, like, we can't turn around and go. We'd we'd rather these companies didn't advertise on our channel. It's like you just have to allow all these companies. Well, I I I or Chris, we might be morally opposed to the behaviour of some of these companies, and we've got no control. Let's just say a company has paid me to make a video, and their competitor then is like shows up as an advert. Looks bad. That can cause a problem for us, and the fact that we don't get to control it is really really annoying. So. What we have decided between us would be a really cool idea is work with not just brands, but work with friends, people that we've known in the tattoo industry for a very long time. Just work with our mates. Yeah, our mates. That's how the channel started. It's just two mates working together and, and doing yeah. their thing. And we just thought, well, maybe our mates, because the tattoo industry 
is actually very complimentary about what we're doing. And that's great news for us. It gives us like a little, you know, little ego boost and that and spurs us on. And because of that, our, our friends in tattooing, who are companies that we've, whose products we use and, you know, we've got drunk with them at conventions and all that yeah. sort of stuff, well, they, they want to get involved. Uh, but they don't want to get involved in such a way as they overbrand us and turn it into the, the, the blah blah channel or the, oh, it's still the, the tattoo show. It's still independent. We can still take a sponsor's product and say we don't like it because that's got to be part of the deal. Which we have done. Something. Which we have done, yeah. We've, we've done it with a couple of things, you know, where... Where we said, look, we just don't like it, you know. Comment down below what you think of this, right? You know, we, we've got to get um, some funding for the channel so we can carry on bringing you better and better content. And that involves getting other people to, to give us some dough to, to do our thing. And this feels to us like yeah. the, the best way of doing it, right? Get our mates to get involved. And hopefully, you know, you'll see that they're supporting your favourite tattoo show and go and buy some products off them. I mean, we got some really cool ideas as well, haven't we? Like, we've got... Yeah, we've got some great stuff. Like, ideas, like, we want to make documentaries. We want to do, like, not not massive ones, but, like, you know, interesting documentaries that are all tattoo-related. Things like tattoo history. Like, I was chatting to Paul the other day about, like, you know, the, the, the origins of tattooing. And it's like, you know, where is the... Because... No one really knows the origins of like tattooing, and, and and obviously people in America like Western tattooing. It's like it all comes from like you know East Asia and in Europe and things like that. But then at the same time, like how many people didn't know that the was, was it like Britannia is like roughly translates as the land of the painted people. Yeah. So the the name the Britons when you when you. When you spell it B-R-I-T-O-N-S, the Britons, it roughly translates as the painted people. You know, I think it's Britannia. For, is it Britannia? Like I, I, I read, I read online. Like uh, I, I read an article, and it was saying that basically, like tattooing for ancient Britons, like people from the UK, tattooing was like uh, done like a like like football. Like I mean, that's how it was just like a thing that we did. We just fucking tattooed each other. And I feel that's super interesting because, you know, when people are all about like heritage, yeah, people's culture, like they might not realise like that the United Kingdom as a country has got a f- extremely rich history and heritage when it comes to tattooing. Uh, that amazes me. And if it, you know, if, if you're interested in you, then fucking happy days. We'll make a documentary yeah, on it. Yeah, we're going to, I mean, we want to do that. We've got a couple of other ideas for documentaries. And like we say, these things, they're not the, uh, they're not the cheapest things to make, but we, we're not going to let that stand in the way. We're just going to go around it and, and figure out a way to keep bringing you cool content, you know, because that's what it's all about. So we got a little bit of news. Uh, first bit of news was we were meant to have Mario Barth on the show today. We were. And, yeah, it was his birthday, apparently. So, sorry, Mario, come on, priorities, mate, you know. <laughs> hey, it was my birthday yesterday, and I did the reinventing show. Yeah, you went on reinventing the tattoo, didn't you? Yeah. I did, yeah. It was good, it was good. I'm a force in the industry, somebody said. Am I not good enough to go on it? I'm sure, uh, I'm sure my... I've got another invite to go and do something. Gabe asked me to go and do something. I'm sure you're welcome on the show at any time. I know Gabe's been... You know, because you know what my diary's like for trying to schedule stuff. Gabe's been chasing me to go and do it for, a, like, probably a year now. So yeah. got a bit, like... You know, when you, we have to say, sorry, man, I can't make it this week. And you've said it so many times, you just feel like a bit of a heel because you're kind of like... It's going to sound like I'm just making excuses at this point. So I said, look, man, like, I really want to do this. Let's hook something up and get it in the diary. And we probably, we, we probably had to plan that three months ago to get it sorted. Yeah. But next time we do it, you should come on. I'll, uh, I'll, we'll drop in because they, they do all kinds of stuff over there there's a bit of sad news um, I don't know if anyone's seen yeah I don't know if anyone's seen or if anyone knows uh, a tattoo is called Scott Olive his wife passed away suddenly which is oh, fucking so tragic nice. I couldn't imagine that happening like, it's such a fucking tragic thing but somebody has I'm not sure who's actually set it up but they have actually set up a GoFundMe page to kind of help with medical costs and funeral costs and things like that. So we'll put that in the description below. And if you can do, don't know anything, if it's like five dollars to a hundred dollars or whatever you can afford to help help them out, I think they would appreciate it. So yeah, that's that's basically the news. I was fucking kind of gutted when I saw that. It's just sad, like Scott's not Scott. It's not very old, is he? I, mean, I, I don't think so. Not, not no, they're quite young, I mean, like, so you, yeah. All I'm thinking is that, you know, things like funeral arrangements might not be something that, 
he's thinking at the moment. So if you can help, I'm 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 going to go over and donate some to the, the GoFundMe. Um, put your hand in your pocket and help out a fella to, uh, in a time of need. That's what's great about this community, this industry, is that we do help each other out. You know. It's, it's I think he's... He hasn't charged his fucking phone, did he? Ah, what a bell end. What a bell end. Looks like I'm on my own, and he's probably on his own at the same time as well. Uh, I don't know what's happening. Let me see. I'm bringing him. No answer. Hmm. I'll come back now. One eternity later. What the fuck happened there then? I don't use my phone very much, right? He's like, it's right. He's like, I'm so professional now. I got a fucking two and a half round camera, but I can't remember to charge my fucking phone. Well, because I don't mm. use my phone very much, right? I um, I don't charge my phone every day, right? Because I don't need to, yeah. And this is, I swear to you, this is the first time that's ever happened to me. I'm, I was like talking to the camera. I look round and I'm like, why isn't Chris joining in? And, and the phone's black. And I'm like, what's happened to my phone? And at first I was like, my phone broke. And it just run out of battery. <laughs> and of course, then it takes fucking forever for it to come back yeah. on because it needs enough charge to run. But there you go. So anyway, sorry. Um, what was the, uh, so we did the one bit of news, what's the, have you got any other news? Yeah, there's one bit of news, and I'd like to, I, I, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, actually. Like, you know what you're going on about, like, I, I think I said it's in the last episode, like, no, there are a few, ta I'm, a few tattooists that are very, kind of, like, opposed to wearing masks, are starting to come down with COVID. More tattooists that I've seen that are opposed to wearing masks are coming down with COVID. And obviously... In England, the restrictions have been completely lifted on the 19th of this month. Yeah. And no mask wearing, yeah? No. no. In Wales, they're keeping the mask wearing until, like, the 2nd of August. And I feel like I, I'm still having to explain to my clients, like, I couldn't give a fuck what the government say. Masks in my shop. Yeah, yeah. No masky, no tattoo like. And if you think I'm a bad guy for looking after my family and their health, then fuck you. I get it. I mean, I, obviously with them lifting the restrictions, me and Karen have literally had that conversation this morning about, you know, where are we going to stand with this? We're going to ask our clients to carry on, you know, wearing masks um, because I'm going to carry on wearing a mask. Yeah. Or, I mean, indefinitely because I, I'm, I, like, I think we said the week before, I, I'm just having... I haven't got sick, you know what I mean? So I think there's a, there's a benefit. The, since since I've spoken to you last, like since we've recorded last, right, the amount of people that I know that have contracted COVID, I am telling you now, we are fucking going to be going into a third wave now. September lockdown is what I'm thinking. I don't think they're going to lock us down. People will fucking riot. But I think what the government have done, right, is they've put this in our hands. They've gone, are you responsible enough, right, to do the right thing? And a lot of people are not. And like, I'm not going to be asking clients, oh, can you please wear a mask? I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah. wear a mask or you don't get tattooed. If you want your deposit back, I'll give you your deposit back. Fair enough. But I'm not jeopardizing the safety of my family, the people that I work with and, and everything because you are not prepared. Yep. Basically, protect me while I spend six or seven hours or eight hours tattooing you. So... No, I agree. I mean, we've, you know, my take on it was let's ask the clients to do that. Um, I've, I'm still to have a conversation with the guys in the shop and see how everybody feels about it. It might be that we go that route and say, you know, like if all the guys are like, look, it's 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 still a little bit sketchy for people to be coming in. Well, you've still got fucking uh, Lucas here. He's still vulnerable. So Yeah, I mean, Lucas is vulnerable. Uh, Beth, obviously, being 19. Uh, 20 in about two days' time, but she, um, by the time you watch this, my daughter will be 20. That's fucking mental. Like, I oh, know. I remember seeing her, like, fucking, like, conventions. yeah, being drawing tattoos in the shop when I come and visit. Yeah, man, she used to come to conventions with me and, and like, break down my booth and everything and set up for me. Fucking like, mad. She's got these gloves that are, like, look like, like, um, Edward Scissorhands gloves and everything. It's so funny, some of the photos I've got. I'll stick a couple of photos up on screen, but she's a banging little tattooist now, so... She's doing really well, but she's had no um, vaccinations at all because she's only 19, 20. So I think 
it would be wise, but you know, obviously, I got I got a team, so I'm going to consult with the team yeah. and see what they say. My take on it is, I'm I'm going to ask my clients to do to do that just out of just respect for the foreseeable, you know, just out of yeah, there's a little bit of that, and just out of safety. I think Chris Jones, this is a mate of ours, a tattoo, he's called Chris Jones. He put up a great meme the other day on, uh, I think it was on Facebook, that was the basically the government's um, advice was, look, we've given up. Uh, we, we haven't got any more ideas. We didn't have any many ideas to start with. Over to you. You know, it's now it's your fault. And that's kind of what it feels like. You know? They're putting the responsibility on this, and this is what's going to happen, right? If they do have another lockdown, they're going to go, well, do you know what? We put the responsibility on you. You weren't responsible enough to look after yourselves, and now we're going to have to lock down again. Oh, dear. Uh, the other bit of news, um, and I, I do not take any pleasure at all in saying this to you, but... Uh, Even though you're smiling. <laughs> it, it didn't come home, did it? No, it didn't, it uh, didn't come home in the end. It, it came home, if, if, I'm, if I'm absolutely honest. I think England, England played really well for about the first 25 minutes of the game and then it just felt like they kind of went off the boil a little bit. I do think Italy were the better of the team. And also, because I've got a bunch of Italian friends and I know they've had, you know, Italy's had a really, really rough time in COVID. You know, I've been talking with friends. I bet it's nice for them, like, to be like, ah, we get a win. Both of the countries could go, look, our country needs a win at this point. I think it would have been great for England, but it also, it's been great for Italy. They've won the Eurovision Song Contest and the the European football um, in the same year. Yeah, they've won Europe. They've won Europe. They've just won everything in Europe. I mean, fair play to them. But my phone just fucking blew up on the night when the final whistle blew. My phone, like all the text messages that were coming through were just all in Italian, all extremely rude, all extremely well-natured, but extremely rude. It's all your Italian friends going, ah, (laughs) vaffanculo. It's just one of them. If I don't wind this up, you're never going to get out of this loop because this you, you are literally just in the middle of a phone conversation with me and Chris now. So, with that, I mean, we like thank you very piss. much for joining us mean? on this Sunday morning. It, <laughs> yeah, we do like taking a piss. As you can, this is the, well, they've been here for a year. They know this is what the I, this is. This is what I don't get. See, like I, I got, I got to address. This is what I don't get. It's like. When we're commenting to back See what to people, I mean? we're stuck in the yeah. loop. So don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so on this uh, this Sunday morning, I mean, you you bound to have got through at least two cups of tea by now. Fucking uh, Anna, I hope you've entertained you a little bit. Vegan uh, roll. Two, yeah, a vegan a vegan roll or possibly a regular sausage roll. I got nothing. The vegan to sausage rolls are slamming the though. Pro- they are slamming. They are. I, I'd say what I'd like to get to sponsor the show is Greg's. Their steak, the vegan steak bake, is a thing of beauty. Like if you if you in, not in the UK, you probably ain't got it, Greg's. The corn steak bakes are. Mwah. It all works, but we are slowly edging towards the ed- the end of the show. I slowly. promise you, I'm slowly getting us there. I'm slowly getting, getting, getting closer us there. and closer <coughs> and closer. Welcome to one of the episodes where we we basically just moan. This is a bit of a callback to one of the first few episodes, I think. The Twilight Zone. Hope you've enjoyed two moaning terrorists moaning about just about everything. Have a great rest of your Sunday, or if it's Monday and you're sitting with your feet up. Or holding a machine in your hand like this. <laughs> holding the machine going, it seems like, or just looking at it on the internet and deciding it's fantastic, I'm, that's, that's the one, uh, if that's what you're doing. Then, well, you know, hopefully we've entertained you while you've been doing that. If you're on the bus on the way to work, hello, you're on the bus, don't miss your stop. If you're setting up, then we've definitely been talking for about half an hour, so your client's probably at the door. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. We do really appreciate yeah. it. Please weigh in on the comments while you comment. Even silly fucking conversations and silly Even comments. the silly stuff. We love all that, you know, I mean, it's, it's fine as long as you know that we're going to jump in. And uh, we probably will comment back with some sarcastic, funny comment. And on that note... And on that note, thanks Thanks very much for joining us. I've been the cool guy. And I've been a much nicer guy than fucking him right now. (laughs) (laughs) This has been That Tattoo Show, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, guys. Take care. See you next time. Take it easy. That's really stupid, though, isn't it? (laughs) I know this.